Hi, this is Mother's End. Well, tonight we are actually, if you can see the picture of this rich variety of vegetables, nuts, shrimp, ham, pineapple, to put it in the rice. I'm gonna share a lot of my secrets, how to make the best fried rice. Nobody does it the way I'm doing it. That's why I just wanna tell you, now I'm sharing it with you, and now you're also gonna make amazing, fantastic rice without so much oil and so much salt. I am dying to eat some of this. If there's any left. There's not gonna be any left. <laughs> the first step is to make our rice the night before. We're gonna add some really delicious ingredients, pineapple juice to bring a sweetness, some soy sauce to add umami saltiness. This is a beautiful curry powder. It's pretty spicy that we get at our local Bangladeshi store. And finally, some ginger, which adds a rich earthiness. We love ginger. And we're just gonna simmer this and it's gonna be perfect to use the next day in our pineapple rice. Now the next step is to prep all your vegetables. One thing to note is to try to cut them into similar sizes. That's gonna make the final dish look really pretty and also have a really nice mouthfeel. Now if you wanna receive this written recipe or any of the recipes on our YouTube channel, you can message us on Facebook at Mother's End Chef. We love to share our healthy and always original recipes and we love to meet new cooks who like to cook healthy and delicious. but I'm gonna tell you that this is a lot of chopped red onion. That's how much you need for 10 cups of rice. And we have zucchini diced beautifully by our resident chef, Sharda, and red peppers, scallions, ginger, uh, celery. A lot of people don't think celery is very important, but celery lend beautiful flavors and crunch in rice. If you grew up in Taiwan, <laughs> There are pineapples, pineapples, pineapple. They make so many things out of pineapple. So I remember having pineapple rice in Taiwan. And this was back in the 50s when they were growing a lot more pineapple than even now. So, but in Thailand also have kind of similar kind of climate, a kind of semi-tropical. So pineapple rice again. And then Singapore have their own pineapple rice. So every region you go to, they have their own kind of version of pineapple rice. So you definitely could try it out, your version of pineapple rice. Because it doesn't have to be Thai, it doesn't have to be Indonesian, it doesn't have to be Taiwanese, it's your version. Could be the Brookline pineapple rice, okay? Could be the North Newton pineapple rice. And it's always good to buy fresh pineapple because the canned one is a little bit too juicy. While the one that you get it uh, fresh, that you cut it yourself, it's less. So it's better, it, it does a better job in cooking because when you cook things, it tends to get even more watery. So when you have something that's a little bit firm, it's better. So let's get started. My secret of cooking a beautiful fried rice is a lot, a lot of onion. Now, here's another secret. Once you know how to make that basic fried rice, you know, with lots of onion, you saute them a little bit of oil, and you're going to like cook the onion. That's why I use red onion because it cooks a little bit faster until the onions almost begin to turn brown. And because that's caramelized, the onion. So the onion is so flavorful, so sweet, tender, almost like a cream. And then you start cooking your rice. That's the first thing. Because that way your fried rice could go with anything. It could go with some curry vegetable. It could go with some other sauteed vegetable. It could go with your sauteed a tofu because that is your foundation of this amazing rice dish. So um, since I'm doing like 10 cups of rice, I would definitely put a, almost like two tablespoons of oil to start because I would use oil to saute all the other stuff too, the shrimp, the, the vegetables. So, and since this is a pineapple rice, Last night, I cooked the rice with half pineapple juice, a little bit of soy sauce, and a couple of pieces of ginger. Yeah, you want and to that up? And I'm going to show that to people. That's yeah. what it looked like. And a little bit of curry powder. So the rice already got that yellow look. 
So I'm going to take out the ginger. So you, you see this rice, and it's already very delicious. And most fried rice are done by, I would call it the leftover rice. If you want the rice kind of be cold, because then when you start toasting them, it gets them more crispy. So here's my, my, my onion. It's going to get cooked very slowly until it gets um, kind of like a little bit brown. Okay, so sometimes you can even call it browning your onion. This is almost like try to make the onion get a little bit sweet. Okay, and the red onion will do a faster job. So that's why I always choose to do it with red onion. But sometimes I don't want red onion. I use white onion, and white onion works beautifully too. And I put a little bit of my, because we do a lot of garlic here, so I have some garlic oil right here. I'm gonna put a little bit in the middle for my rice. So we're adding the seasoned rice to the caramelized onion. A lot of people know this, but we're just going to emphasize that you need to cook your rice the day before when you make fried rice. Yeah, you always have to. All the fried rice that you've eaten in restaurants, they are rice they have cooked it the night before. So, and why is that? Uh, just because the rice wouldn't be so mushy mm -hmm. and starchy. So for about how long are we going to have to cook this? About just uh, warm enough until the rice is not a big lump. Okay, so I have to get get them to loosen up. All right. So if this doesn't take that long, and then it's almost done. Okay, and I'm just going to add a little bit of salt to this. And always try to eyeball and sprinkling just the salt from your hand. You don't really have to measure anything. All right, so this is almost done. I'm ready to start cooking the vegetables. And it's always help that you have a little taste of this food and see what it's like. Mmm, it's just fantastic. Okay, and um, I'm not going to add any more seasoning to this rice because all the other stuff is going to be heavily seasoned with minced garlic, ginger, soy sauce, and fish sauce. Yeah, I have a beautiful a little jar of fish sauce. I'm gonna set this aside. So since I have a lot of this garlic in a jar, which I told you, you if you wanna cook with, with, uh, with flavors, you, you're always gonna have some garlic in a jar. And the first thing I would saute is celery, because celery is hard, and you wanna get them to start releasing their flavors. I'm going to put it right in there. And my next item is uh, going to use some of the zucchini. Don't have to use it all because there's a lot of zucchini here. And um, you start mixing things up and uh, get the oil going. And that takes a little while. And they are food that's already cooked. The ham. Don't have to cook too much. The roasted cashew, a little bit, once these vegetables start to get warmed up. The pepper, a lot of people like to cook their pepper until it's like really totally, kind of like really soft. But I'd like to see my vegetable with kind of fresh, a little bit of crunch. And then um, you can throw in your ginger right now, a little bit. And normally people uh, use like frozen vegetables. We decided we're not going to, all right? Because this dish is just is so amazing. So you can just cut any vegetable into this beautiful dice. And um, I'm throwing some, some of my cashews. And it's already roasted, so you don't really have to cook too much. Some people use like a raw cashew, then you have to cook more. Okay, now I'm going to introduce one other item. It's this little thing of chili. I don't want to use all of it. Use some of it. And none of these vegetables require a lot of cooking. That's why I didn't introduce carrots. You get to cook a little bit longer. Okay, all you can eat, every bite is just some hard carrots. All right, so that's why all of this, the zucchini, the pepper, even the celery, they can, they don't need a lot. The star of tonight is actually pineapple. All right, so I had to put them inside, make a little space in the middle, and um, cook my pineapple. This is what you have to do to your, um, to your pineapple. You actually put some soy sauce just to balance the sweet and, and the super sweet, actually. And we have some amazing fish sauce. So if you don't have fish sauce, you just have to skip it. And you might have to use some little bit of anchovy. 
Okay, anchovy has uh, everything that a fish sauce do. You just have to take a little piece, mush it up or throw it in a blender, and then put it back in your pan. Because that will be your, uh, I'll call it fish sauce substitute. Very strong, you don't have to use too much. Okay, now you can see that my, my everything is coming together really quickly. It doesn't require a lot of cooking here. It's beautiful, it got that really, you see the color? The color is gorgeous, right? So always try to use some beautiful vegetable for this dish because it is a tropical dish and tropical means color, all right? So here's a ham. I'm gonna use a tiny little bit, I don't need a lot, okay? But because ham is very strong. So if you use too much, then the ham takes over, right? But you can start stirring this up and, and, and taste some of the vegetable and see if the seasoning is right. Do you need another flavor here? Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. See that? Just gonna try it a tiny little bit to get the sense of the, if the flavor is right. Mmm, wow. Pretty amazing. But I probably could use a little bit more hot, so I'm gonna put in the rest of my little bit of chili. And um, I am gonna put a, just a little bit curry. So, um, Somehow, the dish needs a little bit more flavor because all the vegetables are not very strong. So, this is almost done. You can, you can, um, if you see in the camera, like everything is sizzling here. So that thing is almost ready and saute my shrimp. And I already told you, I can't saute my shrimp here because the shrimp is just gonna get overcooked. And also, each shrimp like to spread out very thin on a pan. So that's what I'm gonna do. So this is done. I'm gonna do my shrimp now. Okay, shrimp only take less than five minutes to cook. So, all right. So I'm gonna use some of my daughter's the oil, the pecan oil, which is very good at cooking uh, sauteing food. And and shrimp, it's very delicate. So a lot of people will lay a single layer of shrimp or not like having them uh, crowding each other. Some, um, some garlic, a little bit of minced ginger, a little bit of, you know, all the little stuff spices we have here. But because shrimp is so delicate, I don't want it to get overcooked or get crushed by all of the other ingredients that I was putting in my, in my uh, pot. And if you saw that how I was stirring them and mixing them really hard, and I see some people do it that way, and they don't, they don't even, you know, uh, uh, think about it, that the shrimp is getting overcooked over crushed by everything else. So I want my shrimp to be kind of like distinct, separate. And in this case, it will be, right? Now, shrimp actually have a beautiful, beautiful flavor, but it does not have any salt. So I'm normally just gonna put a tiny little bit of salt in my shrimp. And um, and the Chinese tradition, you put a tiny little bit of sugar. So I'm doing a little bit of each. And, uh, and a little bit of white pepper. Um, and um, the minute you can tell like parts of the shrimp is all pinkish, you know, got that color. And then now you know you're done. So now I'm going to assemble everything into this bowl. Mixing some of those vegetable pineapple uh, ingredients. And now I'm gonna throw this shrimp in. It's smelling so good. So again, if you think about this as a brunch dish, you know, you can have two half of the pineapple and fill it with this absolutely delectable and gorgeous and beautiful. So not just the taste, it's also looking beautiful. So this is it, this is the gorgeous stuff. And then I'm gonna put all my beautiful chopped scallions. I'm gonna be taking some liberty about just putting some shrimp on top so you know it's made of shrimp. And I think I still have some pineapple that I didn't put it in the cooking. I like to decorate it so it would look more like a pineapple dish. So here's a pineapple shrimp gorgeous display here. It has ginger and rice. I've never thought of putting those two flavors together, but just the strategy of war has flamed my heart. It is 
the stepfather of ice cream, which I think totally bazonkas, and I don't know if you even understand that, but it that, that just says how good it is. Stepfather of the ice cream. Cambridge piano mm. time, folks. Look at this. This is a moment because I don't think I have ever had it served in such a grand way. So here we go. I'm going to try to get everything going on here. Mmm. It's really, really good. I think, like my mom said, this is just the perfect brunch dish because you have all this color and then the flavor pops all right first of all like i said you don't want to dump so much oil in your fried rice that's the first rule and the second rule that you should cook your rice at least a few hours and then have the rice stay kind of cold i use a lot a lot of chopped onion with a couple of tablespoons of olive oil and I cook that onion until it's almost like almost starting to turn brown. That's when I throw the rice in. Right, we, we literally just shot like two minutes and it's gone. This is a, so. this is a very small bowl. Notice the size. A oh, very, very small bowl. <laughs> Do not forget to subscribe to our channel because there's always something new, something healthy, something original, something innovative. And I'm looking forward to meet you, to share more with you.